Hey everybody, so my name is Lucas. I'm a senior, I'm uh, in the Roots and Shoots Club. I'm gonna be your MC tonight. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are excited. Sweet, all right. Well, this is Zoe from Roots and Shoots. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Climate Action Plan launch event. Thank you so much for coming out with us today. I'm Zoe Frank, and I'm a freshman at St. Louis Park High School. Like many of the other kids starting high school last fall, I kinda didn't know what I was doing. I knew what classes I was taking and with, and with who I'd be going into school with, but nothing about extracurriculars, which I wasn't even planning on participating in. However, after the whole class of 2021 was herded into the gymnasium for the first week of school's club fair, I found myself a week later at the fir year's first meeting of the environmental club Roots and Shoots. I didn't really know what I was in for, I thought it was just going to be some casual group who maybe met once or twice a month and talked about recycling. I was wrong, clearly, as we're all here right now. Since I joined this group last fall, I've seen so much happen. Though a lot of the initiatives for developing the Climate Action Plan were taken in the past years, I was here to see it get passed and couldn't be luckier to be involved in something so revolutionary. For our event today, we have a wide array of things to see. For one, there will be several performances throughout the day from student musicians Ben Klepfer and Marco Giovanelli. Um, Nature Valley has graciously donated granola bars to us, and in the green spirit of the day, you can recycle the wrappers in the Terra recycling bins over there, as well as the popcorn bags. Um, same goes for the cups, which can be composted over there or over there. We also have a very exciting itinerary, including talks from Mayor Jake Spano, XL Energy, Superintendent Austin Osai, the St. Louis Park Class of 2025, who are currently fifth graders and the future of our program, Congressman Keith Ellison, and Stefan Collinet, MD from Air Pollutant and Your Health. There will also be talks from businesses, including Park Nicolet and Nordicware, so there will be lots to hear. Throughout the event, feel free to come talk to me or any other Roots and Shoots members, as well as members of the SLP Environmental and Sustainability Commission who are wearing name tags. If you all want to stand up briefly. He, yeah, standing up already. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for coming out again, and I hand the stage over to Lucas. Thank you. Cool. So I, I joined uh, Roots and Shoots as a freshman, um, but I really got involved as a sophomore. And in 2016, was, uh, that was the year where we started this campaign. We, we got connected with an organization called iMatter, and um, we presented a resolution to city council um, asking them to create a climate action plan that would include um, us in the creation and implementation of it. Um, and that's really what set us apart from all other uh, climate action movements is that we were asking for something aggressive and we were asking uh, the city council to work with us, not for us or vice versa. So, so that's kind of the background of, of where, it came, where it came from. Unfortunately, is, is Sophia Skinner in the audience? Is she here? No? Well, okay, we had a few members uh, from the class of 2017 that presented with us. They are no longer with us today, but I think they left. But anyways, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, they, they left the event. <laughs> Yeah, so, so super excited to be here. Um, in February, actually, February 5th is when the city council adopted the climate action plan after uh, months and years even of planning and writing and visioning of what this plan actually is gonna be like. And, and so now we're at this point where we're ready to kick it off to the community. Um, yeah, so, so let me give a, a real quick background of the climate action plan. Um, you, will, you will find a table right here. Nick, you wanna raise your hand and Bridget? That table over there is, if you want to learn more about the Climate Action Plan, what it entails, there's copies uh, over there as well if you want to read it. Um, so basically what a Climate Action Plan is, is a, a plan for the city to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions over a period of time with, um, with really specific goals and ways how to do it. So, so our Climate Action Plan entails that St. Louis Park is going to get to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. Obviously they can, yeah, woo! Yeah. And again, they will um, explain that to you better if you want to go over there and uh, spend time listening to them. They're amazing. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I hope you guys are excited for this. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to, to Katie. Hello. 
I'm Katie Christensen. I'm a junior at St. Louis Park High School, and I'm actually new to Roots and Shoots as well this year. Um, so you've heard, obviously, about the amazing things that this club has done in the past few years. So I want to tell you about what we're doing right now and where we're going. So um, there are two youth positions on the Environment Sustainability Commission, which was mentioned earlier. Me and Lucas currently hold those positions. And that's how we kind of stay connected with the city and how we've worked so closely with the city to develop this plan and adopt it. Um, and then uh, we also have another really exciting project going on right now. Uh, we, in February, a group of four of us, uh, as well as some of the class of 2025, presented to the school board. Um, asking them to commit to 100% renewable energy by 2025. And one of those goals in the Climate Action Plan is to, uh, for St. Louis Park to be 100% powered by renewable energy by 2030. So we are hoping to make our high school a leader in, in following these goals that the Climate Action Plan has set out for us, uh, just, like, just like the high school led the actual creation of the plan. So keep, watch, watch for that. It's going to be super exciting. Um, and then... Lastly, I want to reiterate that this is a movement driven by us in the community and by us at the high school. Um, it's not city driven. We have to keep pushing it through and we're not going to wait for the city to take action. We're the ones who are going to have to take action. And um, with that, we pass it off to Anna. Okay, there you go, that's good. Hi, hello, my name is Anna Casper and I am a junior at St. Louis Park High School. I am also a member of Roots and Shoots. Okay, so some, of you, some people might think that due to the aggressive nature of the Climate Action Plan, that it implies that we have this desire to tell adults what to do. Um, I'm sure some of us wish that, but no. <laughs> On the contrary, we actually want to work with all of you. Um, each and every single one of us in this room has a leader in us. And it is, we are challenging you to bring out that part in yourself. And that's what today is really about. We are challenging St. Louis Park to become a leader in environmental stewardship in the state and in the country. But we can't do it without you. And so, join us and spread the word about this, these amazing things that we've done and will continue to do. And thank you very much. All right, cool, thanks. Um, yeah, really, really. This is this is the beginning, right? This is the beginning. This plan is um, encompassing everything that's going to go up to 2040. So this is the beginning. I, I hope you guys are excited for a, a really, um, you know, powerful long run um, in the future of St. Louis Park. So, um, yeah. So next up, I'm going to ask uh, our amazing mayor uh, to come up and speak, uh, Mr. Jake Spano. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. I just wanna, I, I wanted to sort of tee up some of the higher level issues that you're gonna be hearing about through this, but also really emphasize a few points. Um, so this is a really ambitious plan that we've got. Um, it's awesome and you know, gets us to all renewable electricity by 2030 and uh, carbon neutral by 2040 and everybody's thinking like, yeah, 2040, 2030, that's awesome. 2030 is 12 years old. 12 years. There are LED light bulbs that I'm buying that will probably last that long. So it's not that far out into the future. So we need to get working on it now. The other thing that I would say is that launching this climate action plan for the kids in the audience, this is a little bit like mom and dad promising you that you're going to go on a really fun trip, but not exactly telling you how they're going to pay for it. <laughs> because this climate action plan gets us part of the way but it does not get us all the way with the available technologies that we've got right now. It gets us about 68% of the way to our goal. 
So that means kids who are in this room right now, as you're growing up and you're getting your education and you're, you're gonna need to step into this space and, and show us the new technologies, develop the new technologies. So that's the challenge to all of you. Um, I wanted to, though, to provide everyone with just a little bit of historic context for how we got here. This whole thing started with a single-use plastic bag about six years ago. And I actually was gonna see if there was one here in the room that I could use as a prop. Um, you know, everyone will be glad to know that I walked around to all these tables back here asking people if they had one, and everyone was like, I, I don't, I, I, I didn't realize, I, oh goodness gracious, we don't have plastic bags. That's good. Um, but Council Member Tim Browson, and I don't know, and I actually, I should say, uh, for, for the council could, and I know Karen Waters from the school board and Astonosa is here from the school district, uh, Tom, uh, Ann, could you all just stand up and be recognized? The other, my colleagues on the council, Rachel Harris. Tim, Tim Browson came on the council, he's a Ward 4 council member, and he wanted to get rid of single-use plastic bags. And thankfully, and that's, you know, we, we would like to get to that place too, but thankfully we sort of took a step back and had a big conversation about why this and why now. And what the experts in the field sort of came to us and said was, yes, single-use plastic bags stink, we'd like to get rid of them. However, if you've got time to devote to something, there are two things that you're not doing that you need to do. One was to update and revamp our solid waste policies. And the byproduct of that became the recycling programs that you know now with single sort recycling and a massive expansion in the sorts of things that we collect. And also the state's first organized curbside organics collection program uh, in Minnesota. Yes. Which, by the way, I would just let you know, has been so successful that Hennepin County is now going to require all cities in Hennepin County to provide that as a service offering to all residents in the county. So every city when they do this, yes. The other thing that they said was, you're not doing anything on climate. And in walk the kids, right? So this, if this is sort of play direction, in walk the, children, the kids to talk about climate, right? And so in 2016, a group of students from Roots and Shoots came to us and presented us with sort of a grade card. And they said, solid waste with the changes, you're doing awesome, this is awesome, these other things are great, but you're getting like a D in climate because you're not doing anything. And I joked at the time, there was a little bit like reminded me of my own high school grade cards, right? That I, I did really well in some things, but then there were other things that I just wasn't applying myself to. And we weren't applying ourselves to climate. And I, I, I would say that we, we committed at that point to move forward with something, but I have to give kudos to the youth that have been involved in this process because they stuck with us through that. And for some, you know, for today's generation, they like to have things done. They want them done quickly. They're used to getting things done very, very rapidly. It doesn't always work that way for us. We have so many things that are on our plate but they were super patient and persevered with us and worked with us, um, not in opposition to us, they worked with us. Um, and I just can't say enough uh, great things about the students who uh, were a part of this. And the students who were that in that first group who are no longer with this group, but there's been a continuum of youth involved in this. And so I'm really looking forward to the future. I'm a little scared about the future, but. Uh, it's also, I don't think, comes as any great shock. We all know that this is a real thing. And as I was saying to some of my colleagues here just a few minutes ago, if everybody remembers a week ago, and now you, remember, you, know, you know what today's like? So rapid changes in climate. A thing, maybe? Not the thing? Uh, we had blizzards a week ago and three feet of snow, and today it's gorgeous and 60 degrees. So we know this is a real issue. We know we have to work on it. This is the, our first step in really digging into that, but it's going to take all of you and all of our youth to continue that work. So with that, thank you all, to all of you. This is a great turnout. Thank you to all of you for being here. So I'll turn it back over to Lucas. All right, thank you very much. And um, yeah, just one last thing. Uh, Roots and Shoots does have a table right here, like the greeter table, Roots and Shoots. If you wanna learn more about Roots and Shoots, if you have uh, kids or children that wanna, you know, would be interested in hearing more about uh, the members that are actually in Roots and Shoots and potentially joining someday, that's there, right there, yeah, yeah, sweet. Emma, Adam and Ethan, awesome. So, so next up, I'm going to invite Michelle Swanson from Excel Energy.
Good, a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for attending this exciting event. I can't believe you got this many people in the room on a 65 or 70 degree day. So that shows what interest and commitment you guys have. That is impressive. Um, we're pleased to be here today just to talk a little bit about highlighting our partnership with the City of St. Louis Park. In 2015, St. Louis Park started working with Excel Energy's Partners in Energy program to develop an energy action plan. So just so you know, Partners in Energy is a program we offer to communities that are looking for resources to take their energy planning to the next level. Through a two-year commitment, we provide resources to help the community identify their energy objectives, develop a plan, and implement strategies to achieve these, their goals. Over the past two years, we've enjoyed supporting city staff, sustainability commission members, and volunteers to promote energy efficiency and renewable energy through Partners in Energy. It's exciting how many of the climate goals contained in the Climate Action Plan actually align with Excel Energy's priorities. For example, the Climate Action Plan, as mentioned earlier, has a goal to achieve 100% renewable electricity by 2030. For Excel Energy, we're currently 25% renewables on our system. We're currently 55% carbon free on our system in the Midwest. In two years, we will be two thirds carbon free and we have a vision to reach 85% carbon free by 2030. I think this shows that working together with our communities, we can achieve great things. And as mentioned earlier by Mayor Spano, it's gonna take a lot of people um, to move the goal forward. So we appreciate being a part of that. In closing, I want to have a shameless plug to invite you back to our table that we have here today. There's LED bulbs. There's information on renewable programs you can participate in and energy efficiency. So thank you again. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Uh, next up is uh, Superintendent Mr. Osai. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm used to, uh, when I say good afternoon, kind of a call and response. So I'll try again. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Afternoon. Absolutely. Now, um, if you're anything like me, um, you're probably looking outside and just thinking like the first beautiful day of the spring and here we are in this facility and as I was walking up I was reminded that we're here for an extremely important cause and I would just like to thank each of you for being here. I would like to um, specifically thank our students from Roots and Shoots. Um, I'm new to St. Louis Park. I'm in my first year as superintendent there and I think one of the first meetings I may have had I in July I met with several groups of people and Maybe in the top 10 groups that I met with during those first couple of weeks were Roots and Shoots. And from the very moment that I met them, they demonstrated a great sense of commitment to this cause and a great sense of influence. And I'm just going to take a few minutes today to talk about how we, um, as a public school district, have been influenced by the young people that you see before you. Um, Thanks to many of you in this room, um, we have an opportunity now to update many of our facilities. As you all know, in November, we passed a $100.9 million bond referendum. So I would first like to just thank you for that. All right? It's a tremendous opportunity. A, a tremendous opportunity for the school district to improve um, facilities and in many instances, some very, very, very old facilities. Uh, how many um, park grads do we have in the room? Several, right? So as I see a few hands up, I would probably, I would suggest that the facilities that you attended, some of the same lockers, maybe even some of the same paint floors and things of that nature are the same today as they were when you were a student. And the great thing is, is that we have an opportunity to um, enhance and improve those facilities, not only from an aesthetic standpoint, but from an energy efficiency standpoint as well. And we're excited about that. And one of the things that we're doing in partnership and in collaboration with Roots and Shoots is continuing to find ways as we're developing these new facilities to make sure that they're um, as energy efficient as possible. So I would like to just thank you all for your commitment. Thank you for your continued influence. You know, I, I often say to myself that as my consciousness increases around different topics that impact my humanity, that my conviction around my action, right, my, my beliefs should increase, which ultimately impact my commitment. So um, I just want to thank Roots and Shoots for helping to increase my consciousness and our consciousness as a school district, which will ultimately lead to greater conviction and commitment. So thank you for your time. Hi 
Megan. So back when we presented in February, uh, we realized that some of the older students that are doing a lot of the presenting aren't actually going to be around if the school decides to commit to becoming 100% renewable energy by 2025. Um, so here with us today, we have a group of, of uh, the class of 2025 here to tell you about why this is important to them. Hi, uh, I'm Jason, and I go to Peter Hobart, and I'm in the class of 2025. Uh, I'm here because I care about climate change. I don't want the ice caps to melt so, the, so coastal cities don't get flooded and polar bears don't lose their habitat. Also, I don't want Earth to become like Venus because that is exactly what will happen. And I would like the, our, our schools to do this so that other schools in other cities will hopefully follow. Hi, my name is Taylor. I go to Peter Hobart, and I'm in the class of 2025. I'm hoping that by the time we're growing up, that there will be more and more people who are aware of what's happening to the earth and what we're doing to it and that are actually doing something about it to help it, I guess. Hi, my name's Tanner and I think people should care more about climate change because it's doing bad things to the environment and I like earth. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caden Exted from Parks Managed Immersion, and I am from the class of 2025. I feel like we should move to renewable energy because of global warming and all the problems associated with it. I think our city should be the a community that steps up to try and move our community to a better place for generations to come. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah. Um, my heart is being very fast, and... Um, I think that climate change is important because when we grow up, or even right now, you don't want to go outside and have the air smell like gasoline and terrible stuff. Yeah, OK. Hi, my name's Arun Ferran Zapatnekar. I go to Park Spanish Immersion School, and I'm in the class of 2025. I would really like it if this plan works because it will inspire other cities to go green, so maybe one day the whole country will use re renewable energy, and there's a possibility that the whole world will too. We could even at least stop or slow down climate change. Also, I want to do this so that we're actually doing something and not just talking about it and then forgetting to take action. All right, that was the highlight. You guys can all leave now. Um, can you give it up for the class of 2025? The future is bright, definitely. Thanks, guys. Um, so yeah, next up, we have uh, Representative Keith Ellison to speak. Happy Earth Day! Well, let me say, you know, what a tremendous honor it is to be with all of you. Uh, you have a truly collaborative effort going on here. Not only do you have elected leaders like the mayor, city council, you got school educational leaders here, you got our youth driving us, fueling us, inspiring us, and we got all of you. This is all we need to have a winning effort to go to go, you know, to get off the grid, to go green, to go carbon neutral by 2040. I want you to know, no, no other city in the state of Minnesota has marked an ambitious plan as you have. St. Louis Park is leading the way. You're leading the way. St. Louis Park leads the way quite all the time. And so it's not that unusual that you all would be doing it all over again. But let me tell you, by leading the way, I believe that there are cities all over our state and maybe the Midwest and our country that are going to say, you know what, we're going to be 
like St. Louis Park. We're going to take up the St. Louis Park challenge. We're going to have zero uh, emissions by 2040. Maybe even somebody wants to challenge you guys and go 2035. I bet you'd take up the challenge, right? The bottom line is our earth is the only one we have. I thought I saw some young fellow in an orange shirt says he's for this plan because he likes earth. Well, you know what? Me too, man. <laughs> and they, we don't have another one to go to. And so we've got to preserve it. But I want the young people to think bigger than, than, than what might be in front of you right now. This is going to actually shape your career choices. You might actually think about what you're going to do to advance this zero emissions by 2040 goal. Maybe you're going to major in environmental science. Maybe you're going to think about working the finances and make sure we can afford it. You heard Mayor Jake say, hey, we haven't necessarily got all the money to do this thing yet. We just have a lot of ambition and a lot of heart. But you all can use your creativity, your innovation, and your passion to help make our goal a real thing. And I want you to think about that because you're not always going to be a fifth grader. You're not always going to be a high school student. One of these days, you're going to be an adult and people are going to look to you to help solve the problems of the society that we live in. So let's think creatively. Yes, we can get electric vehicles through our great city and we can make uh, plans and chart courses and set high goals, but we don't know what other ways there might be to help reach our goal. So creativity, art, all of these things are going to come into play. And I mentioned art. I want to mention art again because we need to inspire every single person living in St. Louis Park to think about how we can reach this very ambitious goal. Music, poetry, uh, essays, all kinds of things that can help reach other people in a way that a political speech never really could. We can have essay contests. We can do all kinds of things to just get everybody thinking about how we move the goal forward. And the last thing I want to mention to you is that, you know, in our society, uh, we have people who are well-to-do, we have people who are in the middle class, and we have people among us who are poor folks, too. And when we think about going green, we've got to think about everybody. And we've got to recognize that not everybody experiences the, our society the same way. And so in New Orleans, if you were a low-income person, when Katrina happened, you couldn't necessarily run to the dry land. You were stuck down there in the water. And if you lived on the coast of Houston, Texas, same kind of problem. There are impacts of climate change that people with the least resources will not be able to escape. When we have many, many days of 90 and 100 degree weather, what if you don't have air conditioning? People could, we could lose them from heat stroke. We've got to think about how the equities and the justice angle of this challenge are impacting our entire community. And we've got to think about seniors. Not everybody has a health profile that is the same. Not everybody is somewhere between, you know, 15 and 55. Some folks who are, are more susceptible to respiratory illnesses, more susceptible to uh, the changes in climate uh, than others of us who are uh, lucky enough to be healthy. So as we go forward and solve this problem, I want us to think about the artistic contribution, the equity angle. I want us to think about all these ways that we can live greener and cleaner and zero carbon emissions. So I'm super proud of you, I always am, and I'm just, and I'm with you all the way. And I'm gonna tell every single city in the fifth district, St. Louis Park did it. What are you waiting on? Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Ellison, we're so happy and honored to have you here. I, I really hope you get, I'm really, really, truly. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. So, so now we're going to kind of go into the, the business section of the speakers um, with, an, uh, with a business-oriented uh, list. Let's, let's see. So first we have uh, Mayor Jake Spano who's going to kick it off for us again, um, talk about the impact businesses will have in St. Louis Park. Yes. yes. Mayor Jake Spano. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit um, 
now we're kind of getting to the part where the rubber meets the road for businesses. Um, you know, when we sit down and we do an analysis of all the energy that's used in St. Louis Park, two thirds of that comes from electricity from the commercial sector alone. And we will not be able to get, remember I talked about the delta between 68% and that other 32%. We won't be able to get anywhere near that if the business community isn't on board. So I have one quick question. How many of you in, how many of you in here own a business in St. Louis Park? A couple. How many of you work for a business here in St. Louis Park? All right, that's a better number. That's a better number because you all are the influencers that are going to be moving your own organizations forward on this. And we can't do it alone without the business community's involvement, okay? And Roots and Shoots members, for those of you, so the Roots and Shoots members are going to be signing up, getting businesses to pledge on climate action. So everybody who was either has a business or works for a business in St. Louis Park, raise your hand again. Get them up. Hold them up. All right, Roots and Shoots members, take a quick mental picture. Those are your targets for the rest of the day. I also just want to say um, the Roots and Shoots and the youth, this is really a lot of this work has been done by the youth, right? The council, of course, has makes, makes the final decision on policy. But in between our community and the council in some ways, and I don't, I don't, I don't mean that metaphorically, but in the process, between the community and the council is, are our commissions. And our Environment and Sustainability Commission, uh, Sustainable SLP, has done not just on this, but on so many things that have happened in the, since I've been on the council, and even before that, have done so much heavy lifting to bring forward to the council policies that are workable, that, uh, that sort of align with the work that we're doing, that get us to our goals, that also, though, articulate the vision of the community who originated these ideas that they brought forward. So I just want to ask members of the Sustainability Commission to either, if you're, if you're already standing, maybe wave your hand, and, and if you're sitting, please stand, and also former members. I know Brian Shackleton in the back of the room is a former uh, sustainability, and so is Rachel Harris, our current, one of our current council members. So if you were on the Sustainability Commission, just give us a wave, would you please? And uh, yes, a round of applause. You all do so much great work for us that I would just like, and I think I, I speak on behalf of my colleagues, I'm stealing a line from Steve Holfen, one of our colleagues who likes to say this, we're going to double your pay. <laughs> For all the good work that you do, we're going to double your pay. So twice whatever you're making now, which I think is nothing, unfortunately. Uh, all right, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Lucas. Uh, thanks again, everybody. All right, sweet. And one thing I forgot to mention for you uh, lucky people that are still here, um, Cub Foods generously donated little tree saplings. Um, they will go by fast. So feel free to go up there and take one. Um, yeah, just plant them and they should grow. Sweet. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, so next up, yeah, thank you, Cub. Thanks. Awesome. Um, so next up we have from Park Nicollet, Dan Slade. Thank you, Lucas. Um, thank you, Stefan, for asking me to come here today. Um, and thank you, Mayor, and congratulations to Roots and Shoots, especially on uh, the unveiling of the Climate Action Plan today. Um, it's really exciting, and um, we as uh, Park Nicola are very excited to, to take part in um, going forward with that. Um, as many of you may know, um, we have a very robust and exciting sustainability program at uh, Park Nicollet. And um, just this, uh, this month, we were named a top 25 hospital at Methodist Hospital out of 400 applicants for the second year in a row. <laughs> so, um, and that's not, uh, that's not by accident. It's a lot of hard work, um, and there's a lot of really dedicated people um, across the organization, and especially here in St. Louis Park. 
Um, it's my understanding that uh, Park Nicola is the, the largest employer in uh, St. Louis Park, and we uh, play an important part in the economy um, and the health of the community. And um, we have, feel we have an obligation to improve the health of the community. And in fact, that's part of our mission. Um, and me um, as the sustainability director and Sam as the uh, sustainability coordinator, we take that very seriously. And that's why we're here on a very nice sunny day on Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everyone, uh, to talk a little bit about um, our program and what it means to the community. So um, one of the things that, uh, that we've done to lower our carbon footprint is we've made a pretty strong commitment to um, renewable energy. So um, about three years ago, believe it or not, we signed subscription agreements for uh, community solar gardens. Um, and we made the commitment of over 19,500 me uh, megawatt hours per year um, uh, for 25 years uh, for our hospital. Um, and to put that in perspective, uh, that's about almost 80% of the electricity that we use at, at that hospital. So that's, that's a lot of juice from the sun. So in addition, we have a very robust um, waste minimization program. Uh, so that includes things like uh, diverting uh, recycling. Uh, we started a uh, organics program last year where we diverted over 15 tons of material uh, just since March. Um, and overall, we diverted over um, almost 1,700 tons of material just in 2017 alone. Uh, so that, uh, when you do the math, it's about 3.4 million pounds of stuff that isn't going to the landfill from our operations. Uh, so that is pretty, pretty cool too. Um, another thing that we're really proud of, and this is something that uh, is relatively new, although it's a, a, the phase two of our uh, medicine take back program. Um, last year across Park Nicollet, we collected over 534 pounds of medicine from the public. Uh, that keeps them out of the hands of people that shouldn't take them, and it also keeps them out of the environment uh, so people don't flush them. Um, and that comes at a bit of a cost to us as an organization. So um, it costs us about $2,300 to collect and dispose of those the right way. Um, so if you don't know, um, we have medicine take back kiosk in the Meadowbrook building on the Methodist campus and also in the pharmacy at the, um, at the campus over on the Excelsior, Excelsior um, uh, campus there. Um, in addition, we have been working exceptionally close with with XL Energy, one of our, our favorite partners to work with on our energy conservation initiatives. And just last year, um, our Park Nicollet facility saved over $87,000 with the energy upgrades that we did at our facilities. Um, and that is outstanding. And um, the best money is the money you don't have to spend. So we're, we're really excited to pursue that. Um, and we've been doing it for years. Um, since uh, 2010, we've decreased our energy usage by almost 13%. Um, and to give you some perspective on that, a one to 2% decrease in energy use is huge. So almost 13% is enormous. And I'm really proud of our facilities folks for taking the initiative to get us there. Um, And Sam and I have about a zillion other stats that we can wow you with, too. So please stop back and uh, talk to us at our table. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you and uh, talk about how you can help us meet our mission. So thank you all very much. Sweet. Thank you, Dan. All right, next up we have from Nordicware, Rupesh Pushpala. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy Earth Day. <laughs> so a uh, quick uh, background about myself. Uh, I'm Rupesh Pushpala. I work as an industrial process engineer for Nordicware. Uh, Nordicware is just like a couple of minutes away from here. And uh, I did my master's in industrial engineering from the University of Minnesota. And then that's how I got into Nordicware as an uh, uh, MINTAP intern uh, through a Minnesota Technical Assistance Program where my Focus was uh, majorly on energy efficiency and water reductions uh, towards sustainability. So um, 
most of you must be knowing about Nordicware, but those who don't, do not know about Nordicware, we are a cookware manufacturer. Next slide, please. So we are um, the kitchenware manufacturer since 1946, and um, we have uh, multiple manufacturing operations within our facility right here in St. Louis Park, including uh, the metal fabrication where the stamping process takes place, um, the coding application process, and packing and shipping, et cetera. Um, so we, Nordicware owns uh, the trademark Bunt, B-U-N-T-T, -T, and also Buntlet now. <laughs> so if you see Bunt, it started from Nordicware. Um, next slide. Um, so um, f firstly, I mean, I forgot to thank uh, uh, this Nordicware and also St. Louis Park High School and the community to, for giving me this opportunity to share about uh, sustainability initiatives that we have in Nordicware. And uh, to start off with, I'll start with like, a couple of uh, water reduction uh, um, projects that we had. Um, and uh, if you can just... So every product, every metal product that we make uh, in our facility, it could be a stamp product or a casting product, goes through a washer, an industrial washer, uh, to clean, clean off the parts uh, which, which, are, which have some oils or any kind of dust on it. So uh, quickly explaining about the whole washer process, it is a four-stage process where the first stage is um, uh, soap water wash, and second and third stage are rinse and then the drying section. So if you can look at the pictures, it has multiple nozzles inside the washer where we uh, spray water onto the parts to clean it off. And um, uh, when I started uh, working on this project, uh, the water usage on this particular washer uh, was pretty high and uh, there was a fair enough opportunity to decrease the amount of uh, water usage. And uh, this particular, uh, basically the water usage was high because of more foaming in the washer. So I had to figure out like what are the other ways that we can eliminate foam in the washer. Um, so next slide, Gary, Larry. So the initial uh, water usage was about 27 gallons a minute. Um, with a certain uh, set of variables assigned to it. And then um, I, I knew that hard water, like the regular city water, uh, helps in deforming or not doesn't form as much as soft water. So we were using soft water to a certain extent. And then once we started using uh, city water and also uh, uh, changing some variables like height of the air knife, which helps to rinse off uh, the soap. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, this is helpful. <laughs> I'll do it That's myself. Better. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got down to uh, seven gallons per minute uh, of uh, water uh, in this particular uh, washer from 27 gallons, so which was a big change. And uh, comparing to the year 2015, uh, in, to in year 2016, we were able to achieve a 40% reduction of water usage. And then followed by, in 2017, uh, we measured there was a significant amount, more amount, that is like 70% reduction of uh, water usage in this particular washer. So, which is a big saving for us, not only uh, cost-wise, but also uh, in, uh, natural resources-wise uh, in the whole community. So we reduced uh, nine gallons uh, of uh, water usage uh, in, per, in one year, and then that led to like $86,000 savings in a year. The one other project that I would like to mention is um, the orientator. So this particular orientator system, so when the parts are washed, we coat all the products with either nonstick or Teflon coating or even different kinds of fancy colors that you see the bun pans in. So when we are coating this, these products, these products go on a, a chain on its system, go into, goes into the paint booth, and then there are rotator system that rotates the parts to get an even finish of the coating. Uh, but when it comes to a rectangular product, like a grill, now there's continuously we are missing one edge where we are not painting, I mean, putting the paint onto the part, but it just we are painting into the air. So we found uh, that an orientator system where we don't have to spin the products, but we can just send it straight and turn it whenever it is required. So one of our supervisor, um, coding supervisor, took this initiative, and then uh, um, as we already discussed the plan, but he took an initiative to uh, build this whole system in-house. And uh, when he built it, like we we saw a significant increase in our transfer efficiency. So the transfer efficiency is the amount of paint that we spray, uh, which goes onto the part, but not the, as waste. So 
we improved from 40% transfer efficiency to 55 on the base coat and uh, about 45 to 73% in the top coat. This led in uh, significant savings of uh, paint, which results in savings in uh, volatile organic compounds and solid waste. So we didn't have as much as a uh, uh, wastage with respect to paint. Similar to production efficiency, we gained 150% production efficiency. And apart from uh, just the cost savings on the paint, we had energy savings with respect to rotators where we didn't use much electricity to use the rotators because we were not using any rotators at that point. And also, even on the line production, so once as we increased our production times, we reduced the amount of uh, labor hours to so reducing our bills, our uh, utility bills too. Uh, further, we had like a study with uh, Graphit. Uh, it's an energy efficiency study in collaboration with uh, Excel Energy and Center Point Energy. Um, so this, they gave we had monitoring systems on uh, all the different kinds of machines that we have, and then uh, this told uh, this told uh, told us that what kind of improvements that we could make uh, eventually with respect to energy efficiency. So this is just a list of pro uh, recommendations that we received from Graphed, which we are implementing over a period of time. So a couple of things that I would like to highlight uh, is uh, air lakes it has been one of our uh, bigger concerns that we are generating air uh, using that energy. And again, we have some air lakes. So that was our first goal, our first priority to fix all of our air lakes. But we worked, uh, our maintenance team was able to fix about 60% of our air leaks that we had, and they're still continuously monitoring every week to make sure uh, we don't have too many air leaks and we are saving on air at, at every point. Um, optimization of uh, the idle machines, that we don't want to keep the machines too idle because it's, um, it's a wastage of uh, energy or wastage of heat. Um, LED lighting, um, uh, was a big thing. Uh, we moved from high, highly uh, energy intensive lighting to fluorescent to LED now. So where we not only saw uh, benefits through cost, um, but also saving energy and saving our uh, utility bills too. Um, variable frequency drive, uh, this is something uh, has uh, has been a really uh, good aspect in uh, energy efficiencies and energy savings for us in the coatings department. So when when we have variable frequency drive, we are not the drives are always not on a constant speed, but we change the speed of the drives depending upon our usage and our uh, capabilities. So we saw a significant drop in the cost uh, once we implemented variable frequency drive, but also we saved a lot of utility bills uh, based uh, uh, which uh, which are used the energy used uh, for driving those uh, drivers as well. Um, apart from that, uh, when we come to designing new products, uh, we still constantly keep thinking about how can we have a coating which doesn't require high curing temperatures on a new product. Like It could be lower curing temperatures, so we are not use we are using lesser energy than some of our high cure temperature products. So, Quick overview of our kilowatt reduction. Um, this is a uh, statistics over last five years, and uh, if you look at the chart, we, are, we have uh, significantly come down, but we are still constantly working on how could we reduce our kilowatt usage over a period of time, even with our increase in uh, labor hours, like increase in production hours, we are constantly focusing on how we can reduce our kilowatt usage. and. Um, our potential f uh, future project savings, uh, so that we uh, received some recommendations from Excel Energy and also from uh, uh, Graphit. So that's targeting about a million uh, kilowatt hour savings uh, eventually. I know I went through fast, but yeah, that's all I have. But we're still con uh, continuously having to uh, work towards uh, sustainability and energy efficiency, which could be beneficial for the community and also for us. But I would be happy to answer if there are any questions further ahead. Yes, Larry. So you mentioned you partner with Excel. Yes. So can you, is there some programs you work on with Excel or something? So um, especially working with Excel, uh, some of the recommendations that we get from Excel Energy is on our rebates, like how could we improve our machineries and how could we improve our lighting uh, capabilities. Uh, that's a big plus point for us. But apart from that, uh, they had this um, uh, third-party consultant who, uh, whose name, whose uh, organization is Graphit. So they monitor all our machines, 
and um, tell us like where could we improve or if we have to get any new machines or what is the waste that we are generating. So then Excel Energy comes into the picture and tells us like, hey, if you do this, this is if you get this new machinery, that's this is the rebate that we are gonna get. So we are paying back to our for our new machinery uh, a lot lesser than what the actual way it is. So Excel Energy uh, helps us uh, through our energy saving projects a lot, and we do have meetings with Excel Energy like probably every month, uh, um, and then uh, keep a track of what we are doing regularly. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Thanks again. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Rupesh. Um, so next up we have uh, Stefan Kalane, who's on the Environment and Sustainability Commission, also um, talking about air pollution and health. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to try to be brief here. Uh, this climate action plan is, and we shouldn't lose sight of it, it's about quality of life. And one important way that the climate action plan is going to improve our lives is by improving the air that we breathe. Here in Minnesota, we're lucky because we've got comparatively good and clean air. But the, we still see health problems that are due to the air pollution that we do have. Whenever we're running gas-powered cars, trucks, lawn mowers, snow blowers, when we use coal to generate our electricity, this leads to a cocktail of pollutants, including po small particles and things like that, in the air. These pollutants are breathed in, they get into our lungs, they irritate our lungs, and then they get into the bloodstream where they can cause serious health problems. We actually see an increase in emergency department visits and hospitalizations for things like asthma exacerbation, COPD exacerbations, heart disease, and pneumonia when there's an increase in air pollution. Now, some people are more uh, susceptible to poor air quality the elderly, the young, so our children, and those who already have pre-existing heart and lung problems. But the good thing is that we've got you, and your participation in the Climate Action Plan will actually allow you to exercise control over your health, your quality of life, and even can save you some money. Some of the things that you can do, you can choose clean, renewable energy like solar, and wind over coal. You can drive less. You can switch to an electric car or an electric lawnmower. You can lose less or use less energy by better insulation, by using more efficient lights and appliances. You can plant trees. You can walk and bicycle more. We can make these choices that improve our air quality and therefore improve our health and the health of our family our friends, and our neighbors. So in the end, this isn't about a government mandate. This is about us taking responsibility and making choices that benefit us. Thank you very much for having come. All right, so we are running right on schedule. Um, so this last hour really is gonna be for you guys to just mingle around um, and explore the new tables, or if you haven't you know, seen everything, please, please do. Um, over there, I would like to give a shout out to our, uh, do you wanna say something? I forgot what your name is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lee Blue Skincare, and they're selling, they're selling bath bombs, and they're giving a dollar for each bath bomb to Roots and Shoots, so. Please feel free to, yeah, these things. Yeah. It is very hard to get funding as a school club, just throwing that out there. Yeah, so, so yeah, feel free to, to just mingle and uh, ask questions to us if you have anything. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for coming.